Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a setup guide for the Colink Regulator ATX 3.0 power supply unit. I'm going to show you how to set up this PSU in your case, all the things you need to know about what cables plug in where, and how to wire the thing up. And by the end of the video, you should be fully clued up on all the things you need to know for setting it up and getting it working with your PC build. So this is a modular power supply unit which includes a 600 watt high power cable for 40 series GPUs, as well as all the cables you'll need for powering most modern gaming PCs. And it's also worth noting that it's fairly compact as well. So for a thousand watt PSU, it should fit in a lot of different cases. I'm really surprised by how small this is. Now being modular, it means you only need to plug in what cables you're gonna need. And it's clearly marked on the PSU what plugs in where, so that'll be helpful for your journey along the way. But obviously I'm going to show you each of the steps and the things to know as well. You'll see other things on there, like the semi fanless design and the switch on there to put it into that mode. And then the cables. So I'm going to talk through all the different cables because it may seem intimidating when you first get them out of the box. There are a number of different ones included, but mostly you should find that they'll work with everything that you're going to need. This is the 24 pin motherboard power supply cable, which is the most important. Then we have two eight pin CPU power cables, clearly marked as CPU. That's for the top left of the motherboard, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then we have the four pin Molex cable, which is used for DVD drives, for example, and other things like liquid cooling pumps occasionally. And then you have SATA cables, which are for hard disk drives, SSDs, and fan controllers generally speaking so i'm going to show you all of these things in a minute and where to connect those up and then we've got pcie power connectors for traditional graphics cards so older nvidia cards and amd cards as well as intel gpus there are three of those cables more on that in a little while and then the 600 watt psu cable which is for pcie gen 5 and for NVIDIA's 40 series, which has its own dedicated port. Now, if you have a close look at the power supply unit, you'll see these are marked and numbered. So that will help. Pay attention to that, but I'm going to show you the setup process for those step by step. So we're going to start with the motherboard power connectors. Now, the motherboard is one and two ports on here, which is in the top left. And the cable that plugs into the power supply is split into two parts, whereas on the motherboard end, it's one connector. You need to make sure that this is pushed well in there and clipped in with the little clip that's on top, the little hook, hooks inside, and it should click at both ends so that you can hear it and it is well seated. Make sure that is seated well because if it's loose on either end then your machine won't power on. Now I'm going to show you connecting up to the motherboard here so it's easy to see, but obviously you'd actually do this when you finished your build and you're putting the cables into the case so when the motherboard's installed in the case. So don't do it now because it will be hard to remove but I want to demonstrate where those go. Next up is the 8-pin CPU power connectors. You might not have these on your motherboard, but some of the higher-end motherboards do have. Some just have one, some have one 6-pin, but they connect up to the ports marked CPU and PCIe. So 3 and then 9 to 12. So select one of those for each of these and make sure you've got the end mark C and PSU in there and then plug that into the power supply unit and then the other ends will plug into the top left of the motherboard. Now these are helping with things like CPU overclocking and power draw there. If you've got a high end CPU and a good motherboard I would recommend plug them in. I often get asked whether you should. My answer is if you have them and you have the cables you should plug them in. Don't skip over that. You don't want to underpower your system, resulting in less performance than you could be getting out of it. Why would you do that? Just connect those cables up. So again, they need to hook in. So you can see there's a hook on there. So you just position the cable so that the hook notches in where it should do over the top there, and then it'll hold it all into position. So that's what the motherboard setup would look like assume that there's a case in there and I'll show you that at the end. Next up is the power for the SSDs and hard disk drives. This is the SATA cable as I said. You'll notice that there's multiple connectors on this. Now one end plugs into the power supply and then the other end has these L-shaped connectors on there and it's daisy change which means that you can essentially just connect up multiple different drives and things to one single cable. There's only two of these cables included but because you have multiple ports you can connect up multiple drives with these. They don't draw loads of power for each drive so it's perfectly plausible to use a few different things in there and this will work with both SSDs, hard disk drives and fan controllers. 
RGB fan controllers and other things from various different brands. You usually find you have SATA connectors on those. Again, look out because it has an L-shaped connector to it. So there's a notch on there. So you can only plug it in one way. You can see me plug in this crucial drive here, for example, and then another one. So two SSDs on one cable. Once again, obviously you'd actually do this when these are mounted into the case, but it shows you nice and easily how to see it. And then you'd need the data cable that's included with your motherboard to run from the drive to the motherboard so that data can be transferred as well. And you can actually use those drives. So I've got a separate guide on all these sorts of things and a playlist that I'll link in the description, which might help if you need further info on setting up your PC or just getting more out of it once it's built. You can connect up those drives and obviously make sure they're installed in your case first, and then you need to go in Windows and set them up. Next up is your graphics card. So this is a 3090 from NVIDIA. It's a gigabyte GPU and it requires two 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Now there's three cables included in the box. Two of them have one connector at each end. You'll notice it's marked CMPSU and then PCIe on the other end. There's another cable, which is a daisy chain one, which is split into two. So pay attention to that because we're going to use that one in a minute. But ideally, you want to stick to the two single connectors. So again, looking for the PCIe power connectors on the power supply end. Down the bottom is the most logical ones to choose. CM, PSU, connect those up, make sure they're seated in there fully and clicked into place. We're going to use two power cables for this power supply unit, but obviously it's going to vary depending on your GPU. You may well have one that just has one connection, two connections, or three connections. And obviously we have enough cables in here to deal with that. And in a minute, I'll get to the newer GPUs as well. Now, you need to make sure that these are pushed in and hooked over the top. So you can see the way you do that here. Now pay attention because actually the one on the left isn't fully seated. You can see it wiggle out when I move it a little bit. So you do need to make sure it is pushed all the way in. Otherwise your GPU won't work and your display won't turn on, or you may have FPS drops and other problems. So make sure when it's mounted in your PC that that cable is fully seated and not under tension that could pull it out. And that's very important. Now, if you need it, because you do have a graphics card which has re requirements for extra power connectors, then you can use this other one with the pigtail daisy chain effect on it. You can plug those cables in too. I would recommend sticking to the single connectors to start with and then use this as an additional connector. Now, if you have a NVIDIA 40 series card or beyond, you may well need a 600 watt power supply cable. Your GPU probably came with an adapter. I'd actually recommend using this cable instead because it basically terminates the same on both ends. So you'll have a single connector for the 600 watt connection. This is a 3070 from Gigabyte. And at one end, you'll see a 600 watt power cable. And then the cable that comes with the power supply unit has the same connector on both ends, plugs one end into the power supply and the other end into the graphics card. There's no difference between them as you'll see, so you just need to connect those up. Now it's really important that this is fully seated and there's no tension on it, especially at the end near the GPU because you may have heard horror stories about the 4090s for example, the connectors melting if they're not properly seated because there is a lot of power going through this. Essentially you're replacing multiple cables with one single cable so it could potentially have a lot of power draw. So it's really important that it's seated fully at both ends and that it's not pulled hard in the case or pushed around at weird angles that could cause it to not be fully seated. So make sure when you've got your PC built that this is logically positioned in a way it's not going to put too much pressure on the cable and then that'll be fine. But you can see how clean that is or will be once it's installed rather than using any adapter that might have come with the graphics card that could have two, three or four connectors on it. Now I want to talk to you about how the PCIe cables might be used for something else. So this is Corsair's IQ Link system, which is a controller that can control multiple fans. And you'll notice that this has a six pin power connector on it. This is actually one of the PCIe cables. So you might find that you need this cable as well in your system, which is one of the ones we just used on the 30 series graphics card. And you see that you can just slip off one of the two pin connectors and it's just hooked over the edge there. And then you've got a six pin PCIe power connector instead. This is used to power the controller so that that controller has enough power to power the fans and the other things in the system and to run that. Now this is pretty rare 
but I have actually seen it on both Corsair's IQ Link system and Lee and Lee's TL120 RGB Unifans. So it may be more common in the future if you've got fan controllers, they may need this. So this is going to be problematic if you've got a graphics card in your system, which already is using three PCIe power connectors, and then you need this one because you don't have that additional cable. If you've got a graphics card with less connectors, that's fine. You can use this. If you're using a 40 series 600 watt cable, then obviously you've got these spare, so that's fine. But here you can see Leon Lee's TL120 and LCD fans, and those require that same connector. So the TL series of fans have a controller. That controller also has that six pin PCIe power connector requirement. So something to bear in mind, depending on what you're building in your system, you may need different cables for different things. Not just for your graphics card, it's also for powering fans potentially. So just keep that in mind when building. Once we've got the logic of all that in your head, now we need to plug in all the cables. I'd suggest plugging in all the cables that you know you're gonna need to your power supply unit before you go about mounting it in the case. Depending on the size of your case, this can make life a lot easier because it means you don't have to reach into the case to try and plug the cables in, see what angle they're at, make sure you're plugging them in the right place, etc. If you've got a more roomy case, that's fine, but it's just a lot easier. Seat the power supply unit so that the fan faces outwards towards the back of the case or the bottom, depending on the, where the venting is, so that it can get airflow into it, mount it in and screw it in place, and then go about installing all the cables that I've shown you. 24 pin on the motherboard, two 8 pin CPU power connectors, SATA power, 600 watt power supply cable to your graphics card, anything else you may need that we've gone through. Plug those all in, make sure they're seated well, that there's not too much pressure on them, and then you should find that it's all set up nicely. Plug in the power cable to the wall and turn on your PC and enjoy. Hopefully this has been useful. If it has, let me know in the comments down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the playlist. Links in the description to find out more. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.